In this video, we're going to look at expanding or multiplying out double brackets and simplifying our answer. I'm going to start with a rectangle and we're going to look at the area of this rectangle. So if I went ahead now and wrote this up, and I'm going to say now that this is going to be 5 centimetres, this one right here, and this one is going to be 3 centimetres. So if I wanted to find the area, I could write this as 5 times by 3, so I could write as 5 times by 3, and or I could just write it as 5 lots of 3. That's going to give us 15, and then if these were centimetres, the units would be centimetres squared. What I'm now going to do is take exactly the same rectangle and split these lengths up. So this time, instead of having 5 on here, I'm going to have 2 plus 3, or 3 plus 2. And instead of having 3, I'm going to have 2 plus 1, or 1 plus 2. So I'm going to say that this length is going to be, instead of 5, just 3 plus 2. And this one right here is going to be 2 plus 1. So we can see these now add up to give the values. We could, of course, just make that 5 and make that 3 and do exactly the same. Instead, what I'm going to do is find the area, and we know that that's going to be the length, which is going to be 3 plus 2 multiplied now by the width, which is 2 plus 1. If I drew some lines on here, and it's not going to be massively accurate, we could find the area of each part. So if I do that, I'm going to put now my 3 is going to be about there, give or take. And then on this one, I'm going to have my 2, and I could put my 2 just here, and then have my 1. So what we're going to have now, and I'll put these dimensions on, down the bottom, we're going to have this one is going to be now the 3, that's going to be the 2, we'll say that that is going to be the 2, and that is going to be the 1. So if I look at the area of this rectangle, it's going to be 2 times by 3, which is going to give me 6. If I look at this one right here, that's a square, 2 times by 2 is 4. This one is 1 times by 3, which is going to give me 3. And this one right here is 1 times by 2, which is going to give me 2. So on this, we can see now that the area is going to give exactly the same as it did before. 3 plus 2 is 5, plus 6 plus 4 is 15. So this is a visual representation of what we would have. Quite clearly, we would just add these. But if we're left with an algebraic expression, such as x plus 2 and x plus 1, we can't just add 2 and x and x and 1. So we'd have to consider multiplying each term by one another. So if that's looking at it uh, visually, what we're now going to do is look at it in terms of an algorithm, so a set of instructions. One way you can do this is something called FOIL. FOIL stands for first outer inner and last. You certainly don't have to do this, but it is an option for you. So let's make that inner and then last. So the first terms, it's going to give me the 3 times by the 2, and that's going to give me 6. We're going to do the outer terms, which is going to be 3 times by 1. These are both now positive, so I'm going to add 3. The inner terms, we've got now 2 times by 2, both positive, that's going to give me 4. And then finally, the last terms in the bracket, 2 times by 1 is going to be 2, and we add that. If I add all of that up, we can see once I've expanded, I can simplify to give 15. You don't have to remember that. You don't have to do this as long as you understand that you're going to be multiplying each term by one another. So this is seeing it now graphically or physically, and this is seeing it in terms of an algorithm. OK, let's go ahead and get the rectangle back up. And this time what we're going to have on here is an algebraic expression for each length, or the length and the width. I'm going to have along the top x plus 3. Along the side, I'm going to have x plus 2. So we have now an algebraic expression which we can't simplify anymore. So if I do this now, and this is a quick sketch, we're going to have, and I'll put along here, and then I'll do one just like so. So I'm going to put that this is going to be x. We don't know the size of x. This is just one possibility. So if I put this on, I'm going to say now that this is going to be x, and this is going to be the 3. This is going to be the x, and this is going to be the 2. So exactly the same as what I've done here. So if we think about the area of this particular square, we're going to have x squared. 
Another killer error is to say that this is 2x. x times by x is x squared. If x was 6, 6 times 6 is 36. If x was 6, 2 times by 6 is 12. We've got now x times by 3, which is going to give us 3x. We've got 2 times by x, which gives us 2x. And we've got 2 times by 3, which gives us 6. So we can add all of this up, and we're going to have x squared plus 3x plus 2x, and then we're going to have plus 6. We can collect the like terms. The like terms are the x's, and that's going to give me x squared plus 5x plus 6. I've expanded, now I've simplified. Alternatively, you could use this method of FOIL, and you could say x plus 2 multiplied by x plus 3, or the other way round. It doesn't matter which way round I write these brackets. x times by x is going to give me x squared. x times by 3, both positive, we're going to add the 3x. If that had been minus 3, minus 3 on the end, it would be minus 3x. 2x, and we're going to add that, and then finally, 2 times by 3, which is 6, and we're going to add that, so that gives us exactly the same. x squared plus 5x plus 6. Another killer mistake, 2 and 5, people often add them to get, to, sorry, 2 and 3, add them to get the 5. You're multiplying each term and then collecting them up. So expanding, now we're expanding these brackets, the opposite would be to factor. And there are plenty of videos on the site about factoring. So let's go for a couple of these then. Let's do x plus 1 and then x plus 2. You can do a table like this. So, for example, if we were multiplying, let's multiply uh, 41 by 57. Often, using the grid method, people would split this up. And again, it's entirely up to you if you want to do that. If we split that up, we would have the following. So, if I do that, what I would have here is now the 40. So, let's put the 40 and then the 1. I'd have the 50 and I'd have the 7. And we'd simply multiply. So, if you want to do it with this one x plus 1, x plus 2. Again, if it's a negative, make sure you're showing that. So x times by x is x squared. x times by 2, we're going to get now plus 2x, it's positive. 1 lot of x, it's positive, plus x. 1 lot now of 2, both positive, so we're going to get plus 2. If we tidy this up, x squared plus 3x plus 2, and that's my final answer. I've expanded four terms and then tidied up. Let's now look at this one. x minus 3 multiplied by x plus 4. This time we have a negative. If these signs are different, our last term is going to end up being negative. x times by x is x squared x times by 4 is 4x, and we need to add that as it's positive. I've got 3 times by x, it's negative, and this is positive, so we're going to be subtracting 3x. 3 times by 4 is 12, 1 negative, 1 positive, which gives us negative 12. Remember our rules for multiplication. If we have now a positive multiplied by a positive, that is positive. Negative multiplied by a negative is also positive. So if the signs are the same, it's positive. If the signs are different, it's going to end up being negative. So if I have a negative times by a positive, it's going to end up being negative. So we can see there that we're going to get negative 12. All I need to do is collect like terms. x squared. Then we're going to have plus 1x, which we just write as x minus 12. Expanded and simplified. Right, let's do a few of these then. So what we're going to do now is 2x minus 1 multiplied by x minus 5. So this time we have 2x. I know that x times x is x squared, so all I need to do is multiply that by 2. 2x squared. 2 times by 5 is 10, times by x is 10x, positive and negative, we've got minus 10x. Minus 1 times by x is just going to give me minus x. 
one times by five is five, negative negative becomes positive. So this gives me now two x squared minus 10x minus one x, which is minus 11x plus five, and we've expanded and simplified. So nice and straightforward, all we've done is multiplied each term. Let's now look at this one, x plus four all squared. This does not, does not equal x squared plus 16. Again, killer error. If we look at this, x plus four all squared is x plus four, x plus four. So I'm going to do x times by x, which is x squared. x times by four, we're both positive, so that's going to be plus four x. Four times by x, which is going to give me plus four x. And then we're going to have four times by four, which is gonna give me 16, both now positive, plus 16. Tidying these up, we're going to have now x squared plus eight x plus 16 and that is expanded and simplified. Let's do another one, let's do a plus b. So we've got a plus b squared. So this is going to be now a plus b multiplied by a plus b. We need to expand and simplify fully. a times by a, a squared. a times by positive b is going to be plus a b b times by a, both positive, plus b a. And then finally, b times by b is b squared, both positive, plus b squared. If we look at these two terms, these are identical. Three times by four is the same as four times by three. So a b is the same as b a. Generally speaking, we write it alphabetically. So we'd have a squared, plus two lots of AB plus B squared. And that is expanded and simplified. So quite a nice one there. Just be careful on those. These two are exactly the same. Collect like terms. One minus three X, we will multiply this now by two X minus five. So if we go ahead and do that, one times by two X, they're both positive, is just 2x. 1 times by 5 is 5, negative and positive, so it'll be negative. I've got 3x times by 2x, 3 times by 2 is 6, x times x is x squared, 1 negative, 1 positive, minus 6x squared. Then finally, I've got negative 3x, and then I've got now minus 5, and that's going to give me 3 times 5 is 15, times by x, we've got both negatives, so this is gonna be plus 15x. Generally speaking, we would put this as the x squared term first, so minus six x squared, plus two x plus 15x is plus 17x, and then minus five. So I've written this in the form ax squared plus bx plus c, x squared x, no x. You certainly don't have to unless told otherwise, but you would be expected to collect like terms. X squared and X are not like terms. Let's finish with one challenging one. Let's do four plus X, and we will multiply that by, let's go for two X minus three. And from this, we're going to subtract now X minus three multiplied by X plus five. I'm going to deal with this one first. So if I do this one, that's going to give me eight X. So just jotting this down, eight X. We're going to have minus 12. We're going to have plus two X squared. And then we're going to have minus three X. From that, I'm going to subtract. If we expand this one out, we're going to have now, so all I'm doing is expanding this, that's x squared. We're going to have plus 5x. We're going to have minus 3x. And then we're going to have minus 15. So minus 15. 
So that is this one expanded. If I just tidy these up, I'm going to have 2x squared plus 8x minus 3x, which is plus 5x, minus 12. And then I'm just going to tidy this up here. What we're going to have in the bracket is x squared plus now 2x minus 15. So I've collected like terms plus 5x minus 2x. So here we've got minus this. So I'm going to have 2x squared minus x squared, which is going to give me 1x squared. I've got 5x minus 2x, which is going to give me plus 3x. I've got minus 12, then I'm going to be subtracting now minus 15, as we've got a negative and negative, so that's minus 12 plus 15, which is going to give me now plus 3. I've not showed a massive amount of work in there. You might want to do it a different way, but that is one way that you could deal with that particular one. If you wanted, you could now multiply through by this minus if you really wanted. So at this stage, you could write that this was 2x squared plus 5x minus 12 minus x squared minus 2x, and then we're going to have plus 15, and then gone ahead and collected the like terms. The x squareds are like terms. We're going to have now the x's, which are like terms. And then finally, we're going to have the constants or the terms that don't have an x. And you can just simplify it from there. So expanding and simplifying double brackets or binomial expansion. Sometimes you'll be uh, referred to as that but it's expanding a set of double brackets.